everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Between Realities. This is episode five of season mm -hmm. one, and I am Alex VR. I am joined here by my friend Skiva. What's up? And we are here to talk about VR and all of the awesome stuff that surrounds that world. Yeah, today we have a super amazing guest that I'm super, super stoked to talk to. Um, Steve knows. Steve, Steve knows. knows. He tell he he is one of the guys that um, that that just fills me up with my with my VR knowledge. Ooh, yeah, fills yeah, you yeah. up. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's really, super great though. Has this awesome show um, on YouTube where you can get all of anything you need to know about VR. He's covering it for sure. Welcome, so. please, to the show, Mr. Steve Knows. Woo, what's up, buddy? Woo! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage, Steve Knows! I think you've just uh, accomplished a bucket list thing for me right there. My own WWE entry, that was fantastic. Thank Honestly, you it's actually an honor to be here, guys. So, no, thank you for inviting me. I don't normally get the, uh, the chance to do this too often, especially with the time difference. So yeah. I'm over the moon to be here to talk to you guys. This is you got a great show. Yeah, Steve's Thank you. over in the Ooh. in the UK. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so we we um, so we're uh, recording actually. We are recording it, yeah, so this isn't totally live, but we thought it would be cool to do a premiere since mm -hmm. you know we can get Steve over from across the pond. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. And I and I and I'm I really love having guests like Steve and and like Eric uh, for president who we had last week. Mm -hmm. um, Eric has started making kind of some uh, like more uh, like kind of like chill like talk to the camera style content mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. steve you're really well known for your uh like news stories and kind of like some of the bits and stuff that you've got going on um so i'm really excited to kind of get some more like anecdote stuff here you know like just rap a bit and like yeah. chill and kind yeah. of get your thoughts on some stuff you yeah know? totally oh well, you said rap a bit there i thought if, what you saw oh, my oculus rap did you yeah well, <laughs> I'll beatbox, you can freestyle <laughs> over top of it. That is just the, the, the whitest, cringiest virtual reality <laughs> rap possible. I, mean, I was just, I was, I was, it was during a period where I was walking to work and uh, <laughs> I've just kind of, I just kind of got in the flow and something I had to do just for a laugh because people take things too seriously. So I wanted to put yeah. something out there that was just a complete That's giggle. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> well, and you know, my introduction to your content um, was honestly the, uh, the super hot ones. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah! Super yeah. the super hot challenge. That, that did, was yeah. like that was like really when I was like, okay, this guy's got something going here. And I should <laughs> that was torture. Attention. That was really, really bad. I was looking like torture. It. So, 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 so tell tell everyone at home uh, what happened there. Oh, right, so um, I, I was a big. I'm a. I am a big fan of the show called uh, Hot Ones from First We Feast, where they get celebrities to eat a bunch of hot wings um, and do an interview. Um, but for some reason, the celebrities always seem to just fall apart on this hot sauce called Da Bomb. Um, so <laughs> I, I wanted to try it. So, of course, Super Hot being the game where it's, it has a pun with hot sauce, I thought that was probably the best game to use it for. So nice. what we were doing, well, we were playing Super Hot, and every time we died, me and Mateo311, another one of my YouTuber friends, um, every time we died, we would take a drop off that of that Da Bomb hot sauce and see who can last the longest. <laughs> I did I did, I did, did one and I fell apart for about 30 minutes. It was, it was ridiculous. My partner was next to me just laughing in hysterics. It was kind of, it was kind of an embarrassing idea, but I'm glad I did it. It was, so it was it Did was you only get the one, Dad? Yeah, I did the one. Ooh, that I, was I, it? I, didn't, I, didn't, <laughs> I know, I know. It's so bad. It's so so British, but <laughs> dude, I, the, Gordon Ramsay on Hot Ones, hands down my favorite episode. <laughs> yes. You like oh. he is, and it's. I think it's because he's British. I think I don't think you guys can handle it. We don't. It's not. It's not that common over here, I, is it? I can't handle it, man. I'd fall apart in a minute. Oh, I wouldn't yeah. be able to speak. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't be able to speak at all. I would you should try that sauce. <laughs> that would be funny. We should we should get everyone that, together. We should do a big that episode big was inspiring. Pot. It was yeah. like it like got rad. me thinking. It's like man, like okay, like what else can we do? You know, because that, yeah. that's what makes the hot so, uh, hot ones so fucking awesome. Yeah. Is that it's like something unique. Like it gives you the opportunity to kind of see people like come unglued and like you know mm -hmm. be vulnerable. You know, like mm -hmm. it's just yeah. a great fucking idea. Um, so like you know, I'm. I'm very excited to see what comes next from you, and uh, hopefully you can live up to the excitement of putting the, yeah. bomb, the bomb dab on your tongue. <laughs> hey, real, real, real quick, guys! I wanted to uh, just announce the winner of last week's Gleam giveaway. Great idea. Yeah. So that was Michael Hurt. 
uh, has won the Gleam giveaway and uh, picked this game and is enjoying some Rico's Fragments right now. Sweet. Yeah. Rico's Fragments. Congrats, yeah. Mike. That game is super fun. Yep. And now that I am up and running and streaming on my YouTube channel, uh, youtube.com slash AlexVR, I will be doing uh, Rico's Fragment streams and Akron streams because those games are amazing being able to pull the audience in mm -hmm. to the experience. Do you know what's going on with Rico's Fragments, Steve? No, no, no. I actually don't know of this one. I know it, of the um, Akron, but not Rico's Fragments. It's, it works like uh, Akron, um, but uh, you know you connect with your phone, but it's like a haunted house. So the mm. person in the VR headset's in a scary house, and the people on their phones are or the like, ghosts like, following yeah, you. Yeah, they're like slamming doors no. on your face yeah. and stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, super, <laughs> yeah. super awesome. It's really, it's yeah, yeah. It's messed up. It's super messed up. Yeah, sounds you like can... the perfect use case for that style mm -hmm. of play. That sounds yep, brilliant. You're like walking yeah. past, and like all of your all of your things on your phone are all on a cooldown. So you're like watching your cooldown meter fill. So you like wait for like a good time to like unleash your your ability on them you know it's beautiful yeah it's beautiful. a fun game for sure. i want to get that actually that sounds like a great one for like a community event yeah you yes. get people 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 who watch you yes oh yeah people <laughs> can control on their phone exactly. yeah people would love to mess with you i'm exactly. sure exactly exactly sure. so <laughs> enter our giveaway after the show steve 100 yeah. percent. oh i'm there <laughs> so so the first thing we want to talk about today is more contact lenses Right? Like, oh my God, I'm, I can't believe we're actually talking about this right now. Right. Like the second company, right? So in with, I don't know, uh, Steve, you probably hear about this. So they, 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 they uh, announced that they're working on um, new um, AR technology with a company called Bosch & Lom, right? Um, this is really, really cool stuff. So Man, these, look these contact thing. lenses actually recharge when you blink. Like they have these little capacitor things on them, and when you blink, they recharge. Whoa! It's so cool. Uh, whoa! So is that like the friction of your eyelid that so. generates energy off of something? Maybe. I guess so. It's it's wild, man. Right? It's like so. I guess I guess it it recharges when you blink, but they also have this uh, contact solution at night that you can put it in, and they also recharge in the contact solution. <laughs> what? Yeah, yeah. It's super weird, man. Like I am. Some like it could be who knows a decade from now we could all be walking around seeing things that aren't there and with no visible way to tell that that's happening. Steve, you can't see this image. That no, because I'm not alive. It's, no. So it's like it's a contact lens, and like where your iris would be, it basically looks like um, like a street of of like conduit that like runs it all the way around with like mm -hmm. little like like oh, house that I've houses that come off of it. Yeah, seen yeah I've thing? seen it. I've seen it. Yeah, yeah. I think mm -hmm. I know what you're talking about. Where yep. it's showing you all the bits of tech that it has in it. Like yeah, it has a transmitter. Yeah. There's a sensor. Yep. There's a chip. Yep, and it's like perfectly symmetrical. Like everything is just like out there. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So it puts all the electronics where your um, where the color of your eye is. I guess you know it uses mm -hmm. all that space that you're not looking through to to pack in the, the technology. Yeah. Weird. So Super is this cool. something conceptual or are they prototyping this? They're or? prototyping it. Okay. Yeah. Damn. So this is like happening yeah apparently apparently so yeah they, they showed actual pictures of the contact lens would you put so. one of these on your eyeball steve um I've, I've tried putting a normal contact lens lens in i can't do that <laughs> it's so hard I, I probably wouldn't i probably <laughs> wouldn't do one of these um it sounds like they're taking it a step further though than what do you do, do you remember mojo vision giving yep. this a go but they, yep. they they were attaching it to an external power source or or uh, or a processor, I With think. With like a cord coming off of it. Well, it was blue. No, it was Bluetooth oh. to your phone. Yeah. Oh. And and this will be too. This will be okay. Bluetooth as well, I believe. Um, and because it wirelessly communicates, um, and it's able to like get your blood sugar levels without doing anything. You know, send it to your phone. Get, gets to your doctor right away. Wow. I mean, it's really it's really cool stuff. We're at the very beginning phases of this, but oh my god, just the potential for this tech. And I'm the same way, Steve. I I um I went to try contact lenses because because um, it's easier to play VR without glasses, right? So I went and got contact lenses, and then I tried for an hour and a half to get them in, and then for almost three hours to get it out. Yeah. Yeah, and I was like, forget this, man. But if this happens, like, I'm going to have to try again. Like, I'm going to have to man up and be able to touch <laughs> yeah, my just eye. <laughs> give it a go again. I'm very skeptic with this kind of tech, because they, 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 they promote all of these... Uh, potential advancements in, in 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 the medical scene, but but people aren't really wearing contacts now. Like you're you're choosing to wear glasses because you couldn't right. get a contact in, and so right. that's where I see AR is going. Uh -huh. it, it, it's a wearable. It's not going to be a contact lens just because it's it's not convenient. And are people really going to give up their biological data 
to this company in order to tell them that oh you might have cancer your sugar levels are right. arising you go see a doctor it's another one of those i think i, I think know, they will moment. because they are right now no one's batting an eye at like facebook for example we all True. use you know oculus and and they're recording everything mm -hmm. everything they can record they are recording and it's um it's like nobody cares you know, i mean people kind of care some people care but we're but there's not a whole lot of avenues for us to go down right, right? so we're you know w what are our choices we either don't play vr or you know for some of us or we um deal with yeah. it and let them record us and i think it's going to be the same for the augmented reality well and you know vr itself has a barrier of entry it you know you know putting a headset on getting everything on it's like mm -hmm. there's definitely a step that you have to take just to get into that and we're all willing to do it so it's yeah. like if the contact lens is obviously that's a barrier entry maybe a, a stronger one but like if if it boasted the most immersive possible gaming experience in the world we'd all be like fuck <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, on, you know like it, we would try <laughs> And my primary, my primary worry is that, like, I just picture, like, the note phone in the pocket, like, pfft, It blows like, up? Yeah. Like, yeah, they go know, to your like eyeball. Electronics and shit. Like, imagine electronic malfunctioning when it's connected to your eyeball. Oh, dude, that's That eye is fucking gone. Yeah. Like, the liability yeah. insurance would be through the roof. Oh, right. yeah. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, but people are falling over and face planting with Oculus headsets on and injuring themselves. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there's, that's, that exists, it exists no matter what. Mm -hmm. But, uh, but the electronics exploding on my eyeball is like, seriously, the biggest thing that scares me. It's like, oh, oh yeah. it's like, that's very scary. like sending images, like sending like, like waves from a contact connected to my eyeball. That's just, I uh, know. like, it's I get so weird crazy, about my man. phone being in my pocket for too long because I know it's like, transmitting and receiving. Yeah, sometimes I put it like right here in my pocket and then I'm like, oh, it's like right by my heart. I wonder right. if that, you know what I mean? Like, right. it's just weird. We're going to be sticking that shit in our eyeballs. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know, man. It's pretty gonna, crazy. Are we going to become cyborgs one day? Oh, definitely. Like, like just pure, I hope so. yeah, yeah. Just like <laughs> half man, half yeah. machine. Yeah, well, Neuralink, I mean, we're already putting ports in our brain. I mean, we're going to well, augment not. ourselves. Well, we're not. Not yet. I mean, the <laughs> second I get to, man, I'm going to be hacking myself. Yeah. There's going to be issues. One day you might come on this show and I'm just going to be frozen. Yeah, I, I, you, you'd be you'd go into the matrix, right? Like no hesitation, like you're in the matrix. I would, I would, yeah, I would. Yeah, Steve, I would. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Which pill, man? Which pill? I don't know. Yeah, yeah, no, it's, it's blue, blue. It's got to be the blue pill, isn't it? So, like going into the matrix, right? We could talk about kind of um, uh, a new game coming out where everyone gets to shoot at each other, go into the matrix and shoot at each other, which is Space Pirate Arena, right? And Nathy just did a video on Space Pirate Arena. I'm, I'm not using his footage, I'm using the old footage oh, okay. here. Um, but oh my God, this game, this game has me so damn excited. Yeah, um, I'm, I've been calling around local gyms, basketball courts, um, trying to find some spaces that when this comes out, if it comes out for consumer, I don't know if it's going to be consumerable or uh, not. It has to be. I hope so. I don't know. They were talking about possibly, um, you know, just for arcades or whatever, because of liability and stuff, yeah. right? But but Triton VR, which is a very similar concept, um, mm -hmm. is is out on SideQuest, and we're going to be yeah, we're going to be trying that out soon. That's what I'm, I'm calling around and trying to find some big open spaces so we can play. But Space Pirate Arena, oh my God, it just looks so good. It looks so good. You get to stand in a pl in a room with your friends, and and. Um, the match starts, all the walls come up, and you have to run around and, and literally shoot each other. There's no locomotion of the thumbstick. You are literally right. running around. And quest tracking is really good. Like, it's, yeah. I mean, what's your experience like with, with um, location-based VR or, or like big room scale stuff? Um, oh, I've got, I haven't played much of it, really. Um, in all yeah. honesty, I, yeah. I haven't done any myself. I don't yeah. really have the space, space, or space to do so, but it's something I've wanted to try. Me and... Um, like Mike from Virtual Reality Oasis and, and Gamertag, we've spoken about uh, trying to set up an opportunity to meet up and try such a thing. That'd but be cool. That'd I, be I awesome. don't have any experience in the area. Yeah, it would be pretty yeah. sweet, wouldn't it? I'd love to those guys. Yeah. Do you guys have the void over there? The void? No, no. Every time, oh. God, there's been so many good void experiences and they've never, they've not been here. Yeah, I, I would have been I would have been on wow. it, especially for that Avengers one. So so this oh, is yeah. for you guys, man, because like here, you know, we've actually had the chance to do a few different things. We've done the void. We've done um, zero latency VR, which is all optical tracking, kind of like PSVR. But you walk through the room and everything and it really sucked. And uh, <laughs> then we did <laughs> Arenaverse. <laughs> yeah, it was terrible. And we did Arenaverse, which is basically what these guys are doing. Yeah, um, but they're trying to like sell that to like arcades and shit. But, um, you know, space tripe spec pirate 
Arena and Triton VR um, mm-hmm. are like that's for you guys because you don't have the void, you don't have this big space, and now at this point, just like Skiva was saying, all it's going to take is you know finding a, a tennis court or something like that mm-hmm. to go to. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it'll be great, and especially imagine if they get this working where you don't have to be in the same physical space as well. Oh, you yeah. both, if you both have the same play area. Right, and you could both run around, then you wouldn't have to worry about actually running into each other. Mm-hmm. That would be pretty dope. Mm-hmm. That's, that's what I. That's what I. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's what I, I. I really, really wish for. Um, for the procedurally generated content like T for God. Have you done T for God, Steve? Knows. Of course, of course. So I have. fucking awesome. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Amazing. It's pretty special. So imagine that with like Skyrim HD graphics, online dungeon crawler. So like you're in your space at home, I'm in my space at home, and we're walking together through procedurally generated space. Like we just both agree to have like a five by five, right? Or, mm-hmm. or a six yeah, by six. Yeah, whoever has just, the smallest area. Yeah, and it mm-hmm. could just drop you in that same space together and you guys could walk around your spaces online together, dungeon crawler, like That'd be great. let's go. That'd be great. Let's fucking go. I am so excited. Let's do it. Who's stuff. developing this? Yeah. Let's do Get it. on it. Team for getting excited. Team for God. Oculus. Yeah. yeah. I'm since they're not ha- doing those events anymore because of you know what yeah um, th- no. they're, they're doing this thing where they'll be putting up blog posts and videos and one of these videos that they're promoting there's one of there's three of them and one of them is all about virtual reality and multiplayer and what they think the future is going to be like and we're going to be seeing that with, within the next week i'm hoping what you guys are talking about is going to mm-hmm. be in that video that sounds amazing it really does I'll be and all over that for me mm-hmm. multiplayer is like the primary like that is the thing that is really really gonna help bring mm-hmm. us together with VR and push VR forward is connecting. It's not isolation. That's the mm-hmm. thing that I think prevents people from, from, from doing it. You know, nobody wants to like go home and just cut themselves off. But if I Nailed put on my headset head. and we're together, now mm-hmm. we'll do it forever. We can spend hours in there. Mm-hmm. So yeah. that's that's gonna be it. Once once we get VR figured out um, with multiplayer, once we get multiplayer figured out, it's over. Yeah, yeah. And we're getting there, man. That's why I think Horizons is gonna be huge. I really yeah, it, it will be, and I can't wait. I already can't wait for its competitor. <laughs> <laughs> I've, got, I've got to agree with you there. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, you know, I, I'm gonna be play. I'm gonna be using it. I'm gonna be playing it, and I'm gonna be in there with my friends. But I'm gonna know that everything I'm doing is being recorded and sold to the highest bidder. So soon, you know, like I keep, like I keep saying, man, as soon as there's some good competition, you know, possibly Somnium Space, or you know, if Microsoft does anything better with Alt Space VR, or just whatever the case may be, man, I am. Or like Rec Room 2. Where's Rec Room 2? Yeah. They, they should just go yeah. back to the drawing board and like make a freshie, you know? Yeah. That'd and maybe be... this time give you fingers instead oh, of... And you see that AR thing minutes. that they did? We probably should have included that in the show. Did you see that, that oh, no. AR? Did you see no, it, Steve? No, I didn't. Uh, nope, oh, my God. Be... Damn it. Damn it. I should have included that in, in the show. Um, everybody go out and check it out. Rec Room just made an AR app thing Ooh. where they were like playing bowling on a table that was like in the room. And like cool. there's Rec Room avatars and everything. And it looks extremely good. Nice. Like extremely good. So so they are doing stuff. Yeah. So who knows? Rec Room <laughs> might, might make it happen too. Do you know what people were playing that on? Uh, I think they were using an iPad. Oh, oh, interesting. So they weren't even using AR glasses. Like- no. Like, no, um, it was just an AR application with oh, iPad like this. Yeah, but I'm, I'm sure once you get it running yeah. there, then you did, can Did you hear, it. kind of going off the subject, did you hear that uh, Magic Leap's for sale? I did. Yeah, 10 billion. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, they, they want a lot of money. They do, they're out of their oh, minds. Wow. For something minds. that you can't make money on. Right, right, <laughs> it's not yet mo- really monetizable. Nah, I mean, not now. Yeah, Maybe yeah. In like... and, and it's good, but it's I didn't see any difference really between that and the HoloLens too. So I... I mean, it was fun, but who's going to spend $10 billion on that company? Right. Come on, really? It's right. ridiculous. Really? Yeah. They already spent a billion on Oculus. Yeah, or a couple <laughs> billion. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. Right? And what, ten way, is a joke. Way to, <laughs> dude, way to put it into perspective. Yeah. Because when you start throwing around millions and billions and shit, mm-hmm. like, I, I don't know. I, you know, like, I can't mm-hmm. figure that out. But, like, no, Oculus went for one, and Magic Leap wants ten. Like, yeah. Oh, I think they did two. Didn't Oculus go for two billion? Either way, it doesn't really matter yeah, because a fraction. The difference yeah, yeah, yeah. is still fraction. Does. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Uh, I don't know. We'll see what happens with that. You know what I wanted. What I do want to talk to next, though, is um, virtual desktop. Now, this sounds like a boring topic, right? No, no, no. But no, oh no. my God, this is they. They made. I think they kind of made a mistake almost by calling this virtual desktop. 
because so this is a program that you can connect to your computer and you can use your computer but the key here is that the latency is very very low um they only then recently, were it, it's only recently got as good as it has though i, yeah, I, I yeah. first used it when i first got my quest and mm -hmm. it's night and day in right. this short period of time for sure so but so flat everything flat has a very very low latency so you'll you'll be sitting in like a home theater or you know whatever whatever um, environment that you want to be in and you can use your computer and everything is happening pretty much in real time the, the key here is that 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 um, the guy who made this was able to get steam VR um, to be able to stream as well right and recently they had a new update where now steam tracking and oculus um, uh, streaming is so good like it's so there's so little latency that I have a hard time wanting to use the link cable with the Quest. I've heard um, some people <laughs> saying that virtual desktop works better. And it you. looks better. It wow. actually, this recent update yeah. looks better than I using the cable. I have to agree cable. with that. How is that I've possible? I don't know, I've, I've, yeah. because with the cable, that they're doing some sort, they're doing, they're definitely doing a ton of compression in order to reduce the latency. Mm -hmm. And I don't think virtual desktop's just doing the same thing. So, so the visuals looks just, they look so much better. They do. They really do. Now, I've been having a hard time uh, getting the microphone to pass through playing multiplayer games. Um, so that's been my kind of downfall with that. Um, there is a thing to be able to pass through the, the microphone and the options, and I tried it, but I went into an Oculus game specifically. Uh, we've been playing some Echo VR, Echo Arena, and um, uh, had a hard time getting the microphone to pass through wirelessly. So I did have to go wired um, for that, and it actually didn't look as good, which is just crazy. But man, uh, what is what is with this? How, why has no one hired this guy? Why has Oculus not come and said, dude, you work for us now? Right? I don't know. Maybe they like don't want people to have everything. <laughs> <laughs> but what about what about for Quest 2, right? I mean, they, they're, they're working on that, right? Everything is going to be going wireless. This guy has nailed immediately the latency issues. Uh, you know, now granted, you have to have a five, uh, you know, a five gigahertz um, uh, wireless router. You have to have some decent equipment. But oh my God, right? I would bring this guy in, and I would say, okay, on our next headset, we're building in the five, you know, the five gigahertz transmitter. Let's let's make some shit happen here because you know what you're doing when it comes to latency. You know, I mean, this guy, I, I don't know what his special sauce is, but he's very. Um, very good at what he does. What do you think about uh, virtual desktop, Steve? I, I am an advocate for it. I, I made a video a while back about setting up ALVR. I'm still getting comments on it about people how to set up, and I'm still there recommending just just use virtual desktop. It's <laughs> so stable. It works so well. I, I'm definitely an advocate for it. I think the guy's name is Godin who wrote it. Guy I'm sorry Godin. if I got that guy wrong. Godin, yeah, yeah, you got it. You got it. Nailed it. Yeah. He's smashing it. because I, I read recently yeah. that... Um, they, to get comfortable virtual reality streaming, you want a latency of 20 milliseconds, I think it was. Mm -hmm. And he's got it down to something like 30 to 40. So mm -hmm. he's, he's that close of nailing it. He really um, is. I think, yeah, I think, I think people should get it. But you are right. Um, he needs to kind of rebrand this feature, maybe even extract it away from the virtual desktop um, yeah, it's application called wireless itself. VR. You know, yeah, exactly. what it is. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I mean, when you Google virtual desktop, I mean, there's a million billion different virtual right. desktop programs just for flat stuff, you know what right. I mean? So it's well, and it's yeah. just generic as fuck, like it is. you know, virtual desktop, like that. I mean, I guess it gives me an idea of what it does, but it yeah. doesn't even come close to scratching the surface of of its capabilities. Sure. So I I think you are right too. I think a rebranding would probably be really smart. I mean, yeah. my my problem, and I don't know if it's a problem. I haven't used it yet, but I'm just kind of like getting up and running with my PC VR setup right now. Um, but like the thing that I worry about is like I don't know if I'm willing to sacrifice any latency to go wireless with it you know like mm -hmm. i like i would rather just keep my wire on if it's going to give me the one-to-one -one feeling like do you do you guys feel like it does kind of separate like do you wish you had it while you were playing it mm. well the way the way i feel is is it's just that I, I, I guess i just i want everything if i'm using the link i do think oh i can see the pixelation i want it <laughs> to look better if i'm using virtual desktop i'm like oh i wish I wish, it, wish, wish that latency was a bit more spot on, mm -hmm. but it really depends what I'm playing. But I think the last time I used it, I was playing um, Doctor Who. It's not exactly a fast paced game, so absolutely perfect for that. But if I was playing Pavlov, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Go, go, go for the right. wide. So, so to go off topic a little, since you mentioned Doctor Who, what like... <laughs> 
So, so I'm a huge Doctor Who fan, right? Yes! Big, big Doctor Who fan. <laughs> oh, like, dude, oh my I God. Love, yeah. love right now. <laughs> yes, absolutely, man. I, I am, I believe I lived another life in Gallifrey. So, um, I, it's that game, that game was cool, but imagine the Weeping Angels section with eye tracking. Right? So there's a section for anyone that doesn't know Doctor Who, there's these really scary characters called the Weeping Angels and they are stone angels and they only can move when you're not looking at them or when you blink, right? So these things, you blink and they come at you and once they touch you, they send you back in time and, and they let you live to death. It's crazy, it's this weird thing. But, but if you were able to blink and have those things move using eye tracking, that experience would have been so terrifying, <laughs> so terrifying. Yes, because <laughs> you know they were doing this thing where the lights flickered on and off, and that's how you couldn't see them and they would move. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? But imagine being able to blink and that thing moves at you. Oh my god, I would have lost my mind. <laughs> yeah, it would have been scary. That would have just been wide open, right? Yeah, no exactly. Way. Put top. toothpicks in there. <laughs> 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 but anyway, yeah, I don't know if I'm Doctor Who, I guess. But oh my god, yeah, virtual desktop. I, late, lately, this past week, with the newest update, you know, and you when you buy it, you have to sideload the... Um, the side quest version of virtual desktop to be able to do the VR streaming because Oculus came to them and said, Nope, take that shit off. Um, which is, you know, I kind of get it um, because a lot of people will be trying to, to, to do VR with their, you know, 2.4 gigahertz, you know, Linksys router and it would be terrible and they'd be thrown out. But at the same time, when it works, it works so good in this last update. I almost eliminated all the lag for me. Like I was playing Echo Arena, no problem. I was playing all these different games and, and they were just fantastic. So um, so keep going, guy. We love your work. Um, it's freaking amazing. And anyone that doesn't own this, that has a Quest and PC VR, buy this immediately. It's, a, it's an absolute must own, I think. You know, even if you just want to sit around and play flat games in VR on a giant 200 inch monitor or whatever. Just good I've stuff. I've like never thought about doing that. Yeah, I, I I did it a little with Half Life too, okay. You know, because I'm trying to pump myself up for. I don't need to pump myself up, but you know, because right. I'm just so excited for Half Life. Have, but, you, um, have you played anything flat in VR, Steve? Like just like sitting. Oh yeah, yeah. When I got PlayStation VR, that's pretty much that's like I did that a lot. Really, anything I could in theater um, mode. First person games in this massive theater with the screen really close, so it would give me that sense of virtual reality immersion in a pancake game. I loved it. Nice. Mm -hmm. I tried that's to play me. Rocket League with the huge screen and it was like scary i was like oh god <laughs> like it was like like i can't even imagine playing that in actual vr but like i like i was like okay i can't do this like there's no way the screen's way too big like i just take the fucking <laughs> i'd love rocket it. league vr that's a great idea <laughs> there's some game uh some company that made something like a prototype of cars bouncing a ball into net uh, i think it came out on psvr but oh. i like tried to get a code and i don't think they gave me one. Oh, okay. yeah right. Huh. Come on, give me Interesting. that. <laughs> hey, we have a code. Yeah, please. give me the code for Rocket League VR. <laughs> There's a couple of companies, I think, trying to kind of capitalize on that. I think one of them was, uh, what was that Chicken Waffle company? Oh, yeah. Yeah, Chicken Waffle. Chicken Waffle? Yeah, there's this, yeah. there's a VR, co I, I know. There's, <laughs> there's this company uh, at, at Dreamland XR studio. in Vegas while we were there for CES called Chicken Waffle, and they had a handful of VR experiences uh, on display. And that's like the only thing that we didn't do. I feel bad. Like, we did everything yeah. else. Yeah, there's a lot of people that were playing it. I don't know. But they had yeah. a game that actually looked really good. It was called uh, Baby, Hands. Baby Hands VR. And it was a soccer game where, um, you know how like into the top, you have to like grab the ground to like run. It's baby hands and it's like a soccer game where that's how you get around it's on like, the field. Yeah, it's like Rocket League yeah. with big hands. Yeah, yeah. So you're like, <laughs> like, like running and like smacking the ball and like grabbing the floor and like everyone's like scrambling around. <laughs> <laughs> this sounds brilliant. Yeah. It's one of those games where being a spectator is just so much better. Yeah. Than oh, it was. It was hilarious <laughs> yeah, to watching watch. Watching people from the outside. Yeah. Like... <laughs> it was hilarious to watch. Yeah. But speaking, <laughs> speaking of multiplayer, right, we wanted to do a quick, each week we want to start doing a multiplayer spotlight. 
right? Where we where we pick a game. It doesn't have to be a new game, uh, you know. So yeah. this so this week for the first multiplayer spotlight, um, we are going to go with Carly and the Reaper Man, yeah. and not necessarily for the PSVR. Um, that's just the trailer I have up here. Right. But I, um, you know, I I talk about multiplayer games every single show, like and mm -hmm. we, like we just did. I just, like, this to me is everything. And I started playing this game this week with my fiance, and it is amazing. Like, I love this game so much. It far surpassed my expectations. It basically made me feel like I was playing Moss, but Quill was my lovely lady controlling it on a flat screen with a with a with a controller on mm -hmm. the computer so it's like, <laughs> it's like a relationship counseling yeah. <laughs> and, and, <laughs> yes, yes this is what i'm talking about and it's like i it's hard to get her to like play games with me especially in vr sometimes because it's like now i'm in the headset now you're in the headset but with this we're sitting back to back i'm in the headset and like um, you know, as the Reaper Man, you have to like, you know, grab blocks and place them so she can jump up and she's like playing a platformer and you're kind of mm -hmm. almost playing a puzzle game and you're working together to accomplish goals. And it is extremely awesome. I love it. And uh, the other thing that I just found kind of interesting is like how many loopholes I jumped through to, to play this game because I'm doing it. It's an Oculus game. Okay. It's on the Oculus Store. I'm playing it on my Vive I'm using Revive, and I'm using Input Mapper to change the to make my computer think my PlayStation 4 controller is an Xbox controller, and I'm using that wirelessly with the Bluetooth on my computer. So it's like wireless PlayStation controller running through Input Mapper with the Vive running through yeah. Revive, yeah. and everything works perfectly. And uh, if you are looking for a game to play with a close friend or a significant other or anything like that i cannot recommend this one enough like i seriously love it and cannot wait to play more of it very cool i really like the look of it when i um i actually saw the uh, the video loved the soundtrack for starters that had me groovy i thought yeah. it was brilliant <laughs> um but but i i'm i was original oh i am um a retro game collector lover that's just that was where like my original gaming passion was was lit nice. love retro gaming nice. so couch co-op to me is something i absolutely adore yeah. and that's just become less and less apparent in modern gaming so when i see something like this for virtual reality where as you said with your partner you can enjoy together i, I fell in love with this actually yeah i'm gonna purchase yep. this straight it's, after it's extremely it good it's extremely good I love That's it. That's cool. I'm, I'm looking forward to playing it. This was a game that when it came out, I was like, oh, I want to play this. And I was like, no one here will play this with me. <laughs> so <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> it was one of those things. And then they came out with a patch that you can make it single player. But I guess it's really weird because you have to control both characters at the same time. And it's very, yeah. you know, but it, and I, I want that experience. I want that well, multiplayer but that's experience. Moss. You know what I mean? That's Moss. Exactly. You're basically yeah, yeah. controlling both characters at the same time yeah. in Moss. So yeah. I feel like it would flow very similar. Yeah. It just, honestly just feels like Quill is now possessed by my friend yeah like that's that's yeah. that's the best way i can think of to describe it otherwise you feel like you're in there you're interacting with the world and uh i won't elaborate much more than this i think it's obvious that i think this game is worth it very cool have you heard of a game called um ven that's coming out yes it's a similar premise yeah. yes yeah. oh i'm looking forward to that like crash bandicoot VR. yeah that's exactly what i thought is that's ven going to be multiplayer as well no oh no <laughs> oh not even a second to think. No, no, no. <laughs> it's not. It's not. But it is that like VR platformer, yeah. which is very approachable. Even like if, like a Lucky's Tale. Right. Yeah. yeah. Lucky's Tale and, and Astro Bot, of mm -hmm. course. And I think we've we've pretty much men mentioned them all at this point now. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> so it'll be good to add another one to that list. Well, very cool. Very cool. I'm, I'm looking forward to, uh, to playing that. Maybe, maybe you can play it again with me. 100%. Yeah, <laughs> we really should do cool. it. And maybe we'll stream it too so that way people can kind of see how much fun oh, yeah. we're having. Yeah, that'd be great. That's a good idea. That is a good idea. So then, so the next thing we're going to do here is since PlayStation VR hasn't gotten any love lately, right? Because, um, you know, nothing's really been coming out for it. Everyone's waiting on the PlayStation 5 and PSVR 2. Now everyone's sitting around with their original PlayStation VR is going, eh, where's all the new stuff? Right. Right, but so we do have some new games coming. Uh, Swords of Gargantua is one of them. Um, now this has been on multiple other platforms. It's on PC, it's on Quest, mm -hmm. uh, but it is coming to um, PSVR. And I will let Alex talk about this because I am personally not a fan of this game. I think it's uh, <laughs> meh. Have you played it, Steve? But... Um, I have not played it. Um, it doesn't really interest me. I feel really bad yeah. saying it. No, you don't <laughs> yeah, have to. It just doesn't seem like my kind of game. Um, I'm not really into that. That kind of uh, that kind of fantasy world style of games is just it's just not my scene. Well, I am, 
I don't know if you knew that. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't like that it's stuff. Um, I don't but, yeah. No, but but here's 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 the real thing, and I think you already know what I'm gonna say. This is why I like it. It's because I can fucking do it with my friends. Yeah. Because I can go into a room with my friends. We look at each other, both holding swords, and we charge something. Yeah. Like that's why I like it. You know, it's it's just like an endless dungeon. You just keep going down. You know, yeah. and it's like the it's not that engaging. And yeah. you know, sure, I do understand why why some people would say that it's like not a great game. But the fact that you can make progression with other people is what I love about it. Sure. And there is not even close to enough of that on PSVR. And I guarantee that this game will fill that void for a lot of people. Yeah. The, all the people who wish that they could play Skyrim VR with their friends will do this instead. And sure, it's not going to be Skyrim VR multiplayer, but it will be like, hey man, remember when we killed that fucking thing together? Yeah, that yeah. was cool. Yeah, that, no, it's about friends in, in, its, <laughs> in its defense, in this game's defense, it's had a lot of content added to it yes, since it I've played it you know so there's a there's a whole um, first player thing you can go through now right a whole co-op section yeah and like so to upgrade your weapons mm -hmm. and stuff so. yeah so I should give it probably another chance I feel like I really played it in its infancy and we did it you on know. the quest, you know, it's because I yeah. only had the quest. And now that I have a PC VR set up, maybe we can play it on PC. And maybe, yeah, maybe we'll absolutely. Like yeah. yeah, I think it's cross by, right? So I'm, I'm uh, yeah. pretty sure, yeah. So, yeah, so we can hop in and see if it's any different on, on the PC, right? Mm -hmm. And the next game coming to, PC, to, to PSVR. Oh, this is the oh, big one. This is the big one, man, right? So, Walking Dead, Saints and Sinners, right? These Everyone's been. been um, probably drooling over all the PC players playing this game. And this game was one of the best video games I've ever played. I mean, it is fucking phenomenal. What do you think, Steve? Yeah, I yeah, know oh, oh, I'm a big fan. What you said, Harry, was, was pretty sweet. Not only is it just a phenomenal virtual reality game, one of the few VR games that I feel is actually complete and whole. It has all yes. of the kind of traditional gaming elements in it. Um, it in itself, if, if it was a, a, a pancake game, would still be fantastic. Mm -hmm. I, I, I think the game is unbelievable. Everyone should play it. If you've got a PlayStation VR, get this game. Dude, yeah, and, as as and, and a lot of people do. That's the thing. A lot of people have PSVRs. Yeah. So this Five is million like people. a big fucking deal because what else, yeah. is, what else is there that has all of those gameplay elements on PSVR? Yeah. Skyrim? That's it? Yeah. Like, is there anything else? Borderlands? I guess would be the other one. Yeah. Oh, there's 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 Doom. some games, but I mean, there's nothing like this. This game is so complete, right? I mean, it was made specifically for VR. You know, it takes into account the force that it takes to get through the skull. You know, the sharpness of weapons and how easily they come out of flesh. You know, um, just so many different. <laughs> different Dude, that's things. like the it's best just... metal song name I've ever heard. <laughs> the sharpness of weapons and the way they come out of flesh. It's like, oh my god, that's like an epic metal album title. <laughs> but yeah, this game, this game gave me legit anxiety. You know, walking through the streets, trying not to get seen by by hordes of zombies. And, you know, all I have with me is is a kitchen knife that I found in some kitchen that I that I was scrounging through. You know what I mean? And now there's all these other people's running around and tr shooting each other. These factions trying to trying to get power over New Orleans. That's that's been flooded and destroyed. And, 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 and you're running around in the middle of this, trying not to get killed by those people, trying not to get eaten by zombies. Um, it, it's just unbelievable. And the gameplay mechanics are so good. They're so good. I mean, there's nothing else like this game. So, I'm so excited for people to get into this game. Well, here's my question now. How are they gonna do with the moves? Oh boy. Oh no! So teleportation, isn't it? Oh yeah. So you got teleportation. I, don't know, I mean, man. oh, there's they they do a good job of of making locomotion happen on PSVR, you know. But they like, do. but is it gonna be the moves or maybe the aim? Like, could you use the aim? I hope. I hope. No, it's you need to have. You need to hit. You do. You got to be able to stab. I mean, melee is everything in this game. Right. You know, not not yeah. that not that the guns aren't phenomenal. They are, but melee is really where this game shines. Yeah. So that's that feeling really of stabbing a zombie in the head yeah. and then grabbing it to pull it off your knife. Yeah. It's just, <laughs> it, it, it never, it hasn't got old. I know. It's so I know. I, I've beat this game, and yet I keep going in, and I keep going to different towns to scrounge to make new weapons, and because I don't want it to end, I don't want this game to end, and and I'm going to keep playing it even though the story is complete. Um, it's that good. So, you know, hopefully the cone of vision that you get with the PlayStation VR doesn't kind of ruin things. Hopefully the tracking works well enough that well, people can really... Well, I'm thinking about, like, 
buttons you know like can i control sure. it like can i like because i haven't played the game yet it's all about you know? the developers like, am i able to like this? do you think i'll be able to use those four small buttons to like get through all my menus i mean skyrim did maybe it. skyrim did it and, and they have the most complicated yeah, menu system on the planet super complicated so. and i got good at it like, yeah it was it wasn't long before i was just like yeah. flipping through everything ah, on skyrim i think they'll like, get it put that on your cv <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think they'll get it. This is a very talented group of developers. Yeah. Very talented. You know, um, yeah. I think they're going to nail this. So when is so. this coming out? So, so uh, Saints and Sinners is supposed to come out sometime in quarter one of 2020 for PSVR. Now we are at the end of quarter one. So who knows, right? Um, I would definitely rather than take the time in this and get it right yeah. than put out something janky. And, you know, it is hard to get through Sony's um, curation process as well. They're, they're, they're very strict with frame rate, droppage, and all what, that stuff. So What was that port that came to PSVR that, like, sucked? That, like, everyone was like, okay, this is broken. It was Aspire 1? Was that it? There's a few of them. I mean, R the Rick and Morty game. No Man's game. Sky? No Man's Sky, yeah. That was, well, that was just Rick, in Rick general. and Morty, virtual reality. <laughs> Yeah, I think, I think what games, I'm thinking so. of is Aspire 1. It was, like, super hyped. Everybody's waiting for it to Probably. come out. And then they poured it to PSVR, and, like, it was a broken mess. Like, nobody could play anything. And, probably. Like, it probably It wasn't even great on PC VR. So I can imagine PlayStation yeah. was... And I played it on Quest, and it was a mess as well, yeah. Wow, that's so weird, because it was yeah. so hyped. Everybody you know, was, like, looked really good. screaming about that. I mean, and, and, and that's that's what's up with... When people make trailers, people that really know how to make trailers could could make you take in a poop look amazing. Right. You know what I mean? So it really <laughs> this, depends. This summer, <laughs> <laughs> one shit to separate them all. <laughs> the biggest game's gonna drop. We're gonna die to see this. Well, yeah. <laughs> there be toilet paper. <laughs> or will coronavirus ruin this too? <laughs> no, but man, you know, it's just... So we'll see what happens, right? Quarter one, I don't know. Maybe it'll come out next month. Maybe it'll come out at quarter three. Who knows? But when it does, five million plus people are also going to be able to really... Um, to rock this game and it's going to be amazing and I'm, I'm very envious for everyone that gets to go in and play this for the first time because it's so good it's just so good i think i'll take this moment to remind all of our viewers that here at between realities whenever we drink coffee we do so from a rendered reality coffee mug <laughs> feel free to visit them on youtube and check out their merch store we promise it's a vr good time <laughs> Back to the show. Back to the nice, nice little plug there. Thank you. Um, <laughs> I'm actually going to fill that up with a, with a bit more coffee. Don't awesome. spill that shit on the control panel here, I know, bro. I know, right? Right. We crashed the spaceship yeah. because of the coffee. Um, what's, so what's next? So next will be the very first VR MOBA tournament has concluded. Oh yeah. Uh, with the game. Cradle of Sins. Yep. So a couple episodes ago, I talked about a game called Deadshot Heroes that yes. had recently become free to play through side quests uh, on the quest. And I tried it, and I did not uh, love it very much. I really wanted to, too, which is the thing that makes me so sad, mm -hmm. um, because I love this game mode, this game format, the MOBA. Mm -hmm. Have you played a MOBA before? Steve knows. Of course, of course. I'm not under a rock. Well, hey, <laughs> ask, Harry, yeah. ask Harry if he's wow, playing a MOBA. He's, he's I know. Me some yeah. Yeah. This is not wow, my style. Hold on, hold on. Hey, yeah. Skiba, have you ever you played a, breed, a MOBA before? Breed, I've, 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 I've played, but it's not my bag. This is not my bag. <laughs> so, <laughs> so for all of those under the apparent rock, because I guess everyone's played MOBAs, um, no, no, these no, are so they're so. they're <laughs> online competitive games that have like layers of strategy to them. It's not just like run and, and blast. You really got to be careful. Like you can't put yourself too close to someone because if you're within range with their ability and they grab you, you're done. Like you can get punished really really hard. So there's definitely steep levels of competition in these games. Um, but I love the cooperative aspect of it. I mm -hmm. love getting into a team fight and being like, you stun him, you lock him up, I'll heal you, and then you kill the, you get the killing blow. Like that kind of like cooperative for me is like everything and uh i was excited to see that I, that this had happened so what's really interesting about this tournament is that this was an alpha tournament this tournament with a ten thousand dollar prize pool concluded last month and the game is not available anywhere wow anywhere with a ten thousand dollar prize yes yes so so are people jumping into this game for the first time at this competition uh they got alpha keys like through discord okay. and like got into the game and like oh, wow. it already has had a tournament and people have already won money 
So <laughs> no one actually even knows that this game exists, yet it's already yeah. being used for esports wow. competition. And I think that that's amazing. Now, I don't know if this game will be the one that like puts VR esports on the map truly. Probably not. You know, it'll probably be like Onward or Echo or something like that. Mm -hmm. But um, I love this game mode. I love MOBAs. Um, I think that this game, Cradle of Sins, has a level of polish that is like far, far and beyond anything that I've experienced so far with this genre, especially like Dead Shot Heroes that I just played recently. Yeah, like that game yeah. is rough looking. And like, yeah. look at this. This looks beautiful, like bright, colorful graphics. Well, and, you know, Dead Shot Heroes too, I went in and it, it sounds like the developer did all the voice yeah. stuff too and it's yes. not good. He like tried to put an echo on his voice and just all this yeah. stuff. Yeah, you know, like, anytime I hear that, I think about reaching out to those guys yeah. and being like, hey man, like... Just take the audio out. Yeah, then. you do you want... You know? Well, like, yeah. I'll do it, you know? I'll like, do it. <laughs> <laughs> Just let me do it. Like, I'll do it. Steve will do it. Yeah. Do it. <laughs> so anyway. Yeah, 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 Kobe. <laughs> so anyway, I think this game looks awesome. Um, I just got a code this week, and they're not hard to get. Just go on Discord um, for Cradle of Sins. Maybe uh, I'll include a link in our video description. And uh, just hit them up, and they will give you a key to play this game for free right now. Um, and like I said, I think it looks amazing, and I think this will do a better job of scratching the itch than Deadshot Heroes or anything else that I've tried playing so far. Hmm. Um, so I haven't played it myself, so I can't really speak to how awesome it is or anything like that. But um, after seeing that that tournament had happened and that yeah. some people were already winning money in a game that hasn't even been released yet, I thought it was worth mentioning. That's very cool, man. I, I, I'm looking forward to checking this game out as well. Yeah, I'll uh, maybe I'll use the link in the description to grab myself a copy. Oh, there you go. <laughs> and then you can tell me why you don't like it. I actually caught a, um, a clip of this of this game, and I, I, I'm with you. I, I love MOBAs. There's not really that many genres that give you the kind of that real time cooperative right, strategy. Right where the team really have to be cohesive. And what's great about them doing now a virtual reality version of that is that each of the members are actually embodying that character. Yeah. So it's more like a real life team than, than when you're watching a game of League. For sure. They're looking pretty much at the same view as you. For sure. And, mm -hmm. and, my, I, I think, and my MOBA is Smite. I don't know if you've ever played Smite, but... Yeah, no, I played a bit. Cool. Just briefly. So, you know, you have League of Legends, right, which is third-person perspective. You're like, I mean, not even third. This is like a third-person omniscient. You're like way above. And then, then you get Smite, which brings you down into the lane. And now you have that third person, almost like that like Grand Theft Auto style view where you can look around, um, but you can't spin the camera, you can't see behind you. Um, so that's a lot different because like in League, you're looking at the mm. whole map, so you can see people everywhere. But in Smite, to look behind you, you gotta spin your camera around. So now this game is just gonna take that a step further. You know, it goes from League to Smite, now you're in the lane, and now into Cradle of Sins, now you're, you are you're a character. Yeah, mm -hmm. wow, that's super cool, man. Mm -hmm. You know, VR just gives you all of these reasons to try new game types that normally you're, you weren't into before. And, you know, um, for example, I was never into um, uh, games like Brass Tactics, right, which is a, uh, uh, shoot, what do you what do you call that game? A, a real time strategy game, an RTS game, right? Where you where you look over and you're like, you guys go attack these guys, you attack the castle, right? It was never really my thing. I always felt like it gave me anxiety all the time. It's like, oh my god, <laughs> it's the oh, level of competition. I need some Xanax to crazy, play this game, crazy you know? Steep competition. But but then on Oculus, they came up with Brass Tactics, and oh my god, I fell in love with RTSs because of virtual reality, you know? I mean, it just brings you in in a whole different way and you get to play these types of games in a whole new way. And I mean, it really, some of these types of games just shine in VR. And uh, so I'm really looking forward to checking this one out, for sure. I feel like everything shines in VR. Pretty it's like, much, is there a game? Yeah. Is there a game, like a, a style of game that is just like, oh, no, 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 I need the flat screen for that. Like, I'm not, I'm not doing it on. Well, you know, I, I, I would say, you know, people are going to yell at me for this. But unless you have a steering wheel and a good rig, I would say sometimes driving games can make you really motion sick in VR because the G's aren't there. You're like sliding around corners, drifting. You hit something, nothing happens, and your body's like, something's wrong with me. Yeah, you know? but I don't, I don't know. I, That's I, a close thing to come up with. I'm really yeah, reaching here. I, you are reaching. Yeah. I, I'm not, I'm not going to accept that one. <laughs> Squeeze I'm not going to accept that one. <laughs> no. What, yeah, right. what do you think, yeah, Steve? Is there anything that you would rather play on a flat screen? Uh, that's what I'm trying to think. I recently played... Um, 
a bunch of NES games in virtual reality. That's and VR, even that dude. was way better. Dude, it's so awesome. 3D Sense. Yeah, 3D, 3D yeah, Sense yeah, VR. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You you put out a tweet, I think, and you were like, oh, we have this retro thing coming up, and I'm so excited to show you guys. And I was like, oh, oh, please let it be 3D Sense VR. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. It was a uh, Resident Evil 4 yes. uh, GameCube virtual reality yes. emulation. And, and, and that and looked really cool. cool. Yep. yep. So, and, t- hold on. <laughs> Tell me some more about that. So, do you are you using a different emulator? Or are you using like the OG like Dolphin emulator or whatever, and using something else in conjunction with that? For uh, which one are you talking about? The GameCube, Resident Evil GameCube, yeah. The GameCube one, yeah, yeah. So it does. Um, this is a Dolphin virtual reality emulator, oh, okay. and it does uh, GameCube and Wii titles, and it can use your virtual reality controller as the Wii remote, so you can still have all the motion control. It does Wii too. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's really, really good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's very temperamental, though. You have to really kind of rummage through a bunch of games to get one that's actually stable. Oh, okay. But if once you find one, that's pretty cool. Did you? Did you? I haven't tried any... Wii Sports. Why did you try Mario Kart? <laughs> did you try any Mario no. Kart? No, no. I I tried Resident Evil one, okay. two, three, and four. Okay. I, I was going to do a separate one for all the Nintendos, which I haven't tried yet. Damn. I'm I am going to get involved in this because I love Nintendo. First of all, I mean, GameCube is like the, it's probably the console that I have like the least connection to, you know, I'm like an N64 kid. That was like the one that like really, yeah. really, I mean, I've I had them all chronologically yeah. too. It's actually yeah. one of the things I, I thank my parents for. I was born in 87, but I got an NES as a kid. So nice. Super Nintendo was already out for yeah. at least a year or two by the time I got my first NES. And then wow. I got my SNES when Donkey Kong Country was coming out. Nice. So that was like years <laughs> yeah. after that had been out too. So I like, they did a good job of pacing my first two Nintendo consoles. I wasn't like born into the Super Nintendo like I should have been. Yeah. I played the sh- fucking shit out of the NES and then at the SNES. And then when N64 came out, it was like the biggest thing yeah. in the universe to yeah. happen. So uh, anyway, I love Nintendo and I definitely want to play more with some of these like VR emulated Wii games. Like, yeah. I'm, like, thinking, I'm, like, honestly, all I can think about now is Super Mario Galaxy. Because mm. I feel like you can mm-hmm. use the remote to, like, execute his little spin jump pretty, like, even if it's temperamental, I don't feel like it would take much of an input to make that happen. And yeah. Super Mario Galaxy is amazing. Yeah, that's it's a good game. an awesome game. Yeah. And part two with Yoshi, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, mm-hmm. that'd be great. That'd be great. There's some good games, man, that I would just love to dive into with that. Um, very cool. And, you know, and me and you, we used the 3D... Um, the 3D Sen VR one, and I was like, Alex, check this out. Put him in Super Mario 3. Like 15 minutes later, he is still in there and he beat the game. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> out of the park i killed i killed what bowser in, I, killed, yeah, I killed bowser in vr <laughs> i think that's the first time i've ever done that by the way i don't think i've ever done a dab in my life but like i watched you do it and it just felt <laughs> right like, yeah, it. yeah it was the right moment it was <laughs> it was um 3d sentence amazing I'm- and, yeah. and if you have used that game on Steam, go and review it. Because I tweeted about it when I first played it, and the developer sent me a message. He was like, thank you for tweeting about this. This is really hard. Like, there's days where I want to give up and, like, oh, not yeah. want to be a part of this. And, like, if you wouldn't mind reviewing the game on Steam for me, that would be huge. So if you're listening, go on Steam, leave a positive review for 3D Send VR. Oh, if that's I will definitely do because, that. Because uh, that really goes a long way for these individuals independent developers and even the ones that aren't independent reviews yeah. are a big deal in te- can you imagine 3d send vr if it was available through side quest to put on your freaking quest oh, oh my god that would blow my mind to have yeah it, like, that would blow, all that would be great. those nes games oh, like that. portable i would take I my quest that. everywhere yeah. me too man please 3d send <laughs> vr developer guy because there's, yes. man, because there's, you know, sometimes yes. like you just want to throw a headset on and just like chill and like, yes. not, you know, maybe just play something that you know and like play something comfortable or whatever. And like, that would just be so easy, you know, like yeah. I'm never playing Quest. A, a great use game. case for, for virtual desktop streaming. Right. I think. But I mean, maybe, right. Because that'll really taste your test your your latency because oh, yeah. old school NES games. Precise platform. Precise platform. Mm-hmm. Right. So you really, really got to have it. <laughs> mm-hmm. dialed in pretty solid but man i want them to do yeah. super nintendo as well that's what i want because that's kind of that's where i came in that was where i started nice. unfortunately i that's missed the nes, NES. Yeah. yeah 
So I want Mega Man X in 3D. Oh, I think I could die happy. <laughs> <laughs> Mega Man X is epic. Link to the Past, epic. Yeah. Chrono Trigger, epic. Oh, dude, SNES epic. has such an amazing, <laughs> amazing uh, uh, thing of games. I mean, they just they just killed it. That console was such a success. It was awesome. And people were just throwing out some of the best software for it, man. Mm -hmm. It was so good. All the way up until like the F -Zero end. Like F-Zero in, in, in VR would be pretty sick. There's so many games. And, like, so they pushed games. the boundaries the entire time. Yeah. Like, yeah. like I said, I started with Donkey Kong Country, but like that was like 3D. You know, like those graphics were fucking amazing when that shit came out. Yeah. It, and like if you compare Donkey Kong Country's visuals to like Super Mario World's visuals, you wouldn't even think that was the same console. Yeah. You would be yeah. like, okay, wait, no. Dude, like, what about what about Star Fox? Imagine first person view flying around in Star Fox. I need Star Fox 64 if we're gonna do that. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. That's what I'm talking okay, about. Yeah, That's yeah. what I'm talking about. S we would definitely SNES need Star that. Fox. Yeah, yeah, the, the SNES one. Yeah, no. But imagine playing. Oh, Star Fox 64. Some, oh, please, someone make an N64 emulator VR. Yeah, that would be yeah. ridiculous. Yeah. I, I know this. I know this conversation is just like all Nintendo now, but like I, I, uh, for me, Star Fox does not stand the test of time. Like no, I, I played the ever living shit out of that game when I was a kid. Actually, this is an interesting fact. That is the first item that I ever purchased for myself with an allowance was Star Fox 64 with a rumble pack. Nice. Uh, that's how badly I needed that. I was like, I will work. Like, I don't care. I'll do whatever it takes to make the money that I need to get this game. Like, please, what can I do? Can I do yard work? You know, and it's like, obviously, <laughs> I stopped working after I got my hands on the thing, you know? But, yeah. Like, um, yeah. And that was like the first thing I ever bought. And uh, I've like gone back to play it as an adult, and it's just not as fun, man. Yeah, like, it's I, not. I just don't have that much fun playing it, which sucks because the memories are there. The memories are fun, but the reality of playing it again is. <laughs> Did you play, did you, and, and we probably shouldn't, uh, you know, it's not virtual reality stuff, but did you play the Wii U one they came out with, the Star Fox Wii U I game? bought it for $5 at Five Below and have not played it. Oh, it's, I pre-ordered pre that shit, played full price for it, played it right when it came out. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, I know, I got screwed on that deal. But <laughs> what was it good? Star Fox. I liked it a lot. It wasn't, didn't have the same you know grab as the original but they did some really cool things with the mechanics and the dual screens and you know i thought it was pretty good what about you steve did you get to play that at all no 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 i've not played that i, I the last time i played it was was uh 64 as well gotcha, and i haven't gotcha. played it since oh, so my wow. memories are still keep, good just keep them just <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. You, yeah in my opinion you don't you don't need to go back Oh man, so so real quick. So I know we were talking about some retro gaming stuff here, and I love that. And you know, one day I would love to do a show called like Retro to VR, you know, where you could where you could go from retro gaming, you know, from a certain concept to how it evolved all the way up into the VR world. Because I mean, it's just all the layers of consoles that have come out over the years. It's just so much good stuff, man. And you know, I'm a collector as well. I have all the consoles. Um, and uh you know they all collect us now because of vr but i have them all they're all hooked up and ready to go we, we got to live that journey though which is something i think did. we can appreciate for yeah. sure not many people have got that and we've got to live it so i'm, I'm pretty over the moon about for that for sure yeah. and it's it's gonna be fun to watch future generations like go back because they will like yeah. you know, babies who are born today will go and play mario one you know yeah they're, they're gonna like play mario 10 or whatever and be like holy shit this came from what like okay we yeah. gotta go back like we gotta go yeah. and see where this came from so people will definitely dive back in yeah and uh there's this kid right now his name is joseph saley i think who is absolutely dominating the tetris world 17 18 years old who you know this game has been out way before he was born mm -hmm. he starts playing tetris and fucking crushes everyone <laughs> wow. everyone you actually dude Crush. crushes them like it's not even funny like there's this guy named jonah who was like the world champion for like 15 years who just like cannot hang he holds the controller like this like he puts his fingers on top of it oh, wow. and like doesn't hold it like with the thumbs like this he goes on top like this Interesting. and he's just like pff, 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 and he rails those inputs out and is setting world records every day like Joseph Saley. At, I need to check. I didn't. I want to check yeah, that out. I didn't know yeah. this. S A L E E. I think is his last name. I, this Tetris ninety nine. He's playing. Uh, no, Switch. no, he's playing Tetris. N E S Tetris. <laughs> no way. Yes. N E S Tetris. Oh. Nothing else matters. Like the new one. Yep. On an N E S controller. On an N E S. I want to ask him what he thinks of Tetris Effect in VR. Um, that would be an interesting one. Yeah. 
Because that game was beautiful. Yep. The sound was so good. Yep. Yep. So, so, so you know, it, like that's happening now. So yeah. it'll be really cool to see what future generations do with the older games once they get their hands on them with all that they know about gaming yeah. in the future. Yep. Yeah. So speaking of, of kind of, of retro, right? Back in the day, um, I, I was always a computer nerd. Um, I was a little kid. Um, and I would... Uh, I set up two computers in my bedroom. Uh, this was back in the day of like, it was before ethernet was even a thing. I think I had like token ring network set up and stuff. But anyway, um, I, this new game came out that blew my mind. Oh, Alex is I'm going to here. the other this room. This is bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> this game called, <laughs> this game came out in the nineties called Half-Life. And it blew my mind to pieces. I don't What's know if that? you've heard of this What's game. That? It's this game where you're this guy named Gordon Freeman, and and you you go into your lab in Black Mesa, and and you're you're asked to do these things, and these and a portal opens to another dimension, and all this crazy shit comes across, and pretty much the world gets taken over, right? Um, and that game blew me away on my CRT and my Pentium Two, um, and it really just it changed me, man. That game changed me. And then Half Life Two came out. And I played through that game from start to finish more times than I can count. I mean, I played that game over and over and over. To this day, I'm, I'm still playing that game. Like, when I go in and play a flat game, I'll usually throw in some Half-Life 2. Because, like, I just, I don't know what it is with my Half-Life obsession. But, but oh my god, guys. Eight days. Eight more days in Half-Life Alex will be in virtual reality and I will be walking through City 17 beating the crap out of Combine soldiers. With a Valve index and With a Valve. Models. Hopefully if my index controllers get back from Valve anytime soon. This is my third set. I'm still waiting for them to come uh, back and I, they better come back by the time Alex comes out, man, because I will be super bummed. But but I I am beyond beyond excited. And next week uh, when we do the show, the game will be coming out the next day, and I can't even imagine. I'm going to be on. I'll, I might be stuck to the ceiling when you see yeah. me. I'll be so excited. <laughs> what, like, are you, what are you going to play this on, Steve? I will be playing it on the quest. On the quest, <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah, that's just that's just what I've got, and um, I just yeah. although I I don't really have kind of the the, the funding to go out and just buy yeah a Valve Index just sure, to play this game when I've already got a headset here. Mm -hmm. so. Me. I'm, just, I'm yeah. gonna be using that. Well, it's expensive as hell, right? It's a thousand dollars, and you're gonna have to send it back to them. Like you're gonna have to send your controllers back. How many times? Like you pay the controllers themselves are two hundred and eighty-five dollars or something, and they won't stop. They won't work for a longer period of time than like I don't know how many hours I put into my controllers before they die. But like I keep getting thumbstick drift, and you know my right controller lost its ability to grip properly. You know, so I keep sending them back. It, the good news is that every time I get them back. It's a very obviously different build of the mm -hmm. controllers, right? So they're making a lot of changes in manufacturing, um, you know, as these problems are happening. And I really hope they nail it soon, man, because I just want to be able to play with my index and I want to be able to not have to send my controllers back. But I'll tell you what, man, having my quest with the link has been a godsend because of it. it because, right? Because every time I get to send my controllers back, it's quest time. And, yeah. and you know, it's... It's pretty rare that I'm like, oh man, I really wish I was playing this on my index because like it, it just it does such it a good works. job. It does such a good job. I think a lot of know? people are are going to join you, Steve. I think a lot of people, you know, bought the Quest knowing that they could use it as a link headset. You know, like that's why they got it is because mm -hmm. now they can I didn't use know it that, as a though. PSVR headset. I bought, I bought yeah. it. Yeah, and same. The, literally the day before <laughs> the link announced, I bought a PC VR headset. <laughs> and I was oh. like, no. What? The day before, <laughs> so luckily I was able to return it. I returned it straight away the next day. Which one? So I'm not nice. gonna, I'm, what did you I'm get? My 400 pound back. I bought the Rift S. Oh, okay. Nice. <laughs> also a great, money, also a great headset. Yeah, and I mean, if you're gonna buy one Good. at one time and like you know you are on a budget, the Quest is the clear choice. Like yeah. you can do anything yeah. you want with it. Yeah. And yeah. I ordered the Valve Index controllers, but I was not one of the first wave. And frankly, I'm glad I was one of the second. Yeah, you got. got it was seven in. minutes in. Seven yep. minutes in, and you didn't get the yep. first wave. Yeah. That's that's so just crazy. I'm waiting on. I'm gonna be waiting on them. And like I do have mixed feelings because like I pay, I well I technically haven't paid the money yet, but like I got. 
pop the order in and like i want to play half-life alex with those knuckles controllers yeah but it looks like i'm gonna at least start it with the quest because i think i'm gonna be waiting on those and i do not want to use the vive wands i don't think the vive wands are gonna do it man i don't know if you've ever used vive wands steve but i have been struggling bro like i used them at um, a vr arcade um they're, they feel so foreign to me because mm -hmm. like, I'm new to VR. I've only ever used a stick. Having that touchpad, I just I couldn't get my head around it. Mm -hmm. Didn't agree with me. Yeah, for some, suck. for some games, it's okay. Like Beat Saber, of course, it's fine. Yeah. Um, I imagine like Pistol Whip, stuff like that, fine. Um, Super Hot, I guess, would be fine also. Anything that doesn't involve locomotion. Yeah, anything that doesn't involve locomotion. Yeah. Um, or, or like precise uh, button inputs because it's like yeah. the a and b are are like are like okay here's a on the trackpad here's b on the trackpad here's y it's like you have to like <laughs> push on a certain point of the trackpad yeah, for dude. a specific button and it's impossible to like do shit when like you're in the heat of something you know yeah. you're just like jamming on that thing and like yeah. nothing's happening yeah i can't believe they put those wands in with their new elite I know. headset i know like, those guys what? are Oh my god, what? it's so ridiculous to me. HTC is just in the toilet, man. Well, and that's they're because the maybe it's because they're like, okay, fine, you want to shit on our Cosmos controllers? Well, you can have the Vive <laughs> ones back. Why? You happy? Why can't you hit a button and have you know infrared lighting pop up on the on the Cosmos controllers and have them steam trackable? Like they screwed up in so many different ways with that headset, man. Right. Like, with the Cosmos, with the HTC Vive Cosmos, they didn't it's have to. it's so bad. And then the Elite is almost the same price as the Valve Index, but you get the Vive ones. And Base Station 1, 1.0. Now, the, the 1.0 Base Stations isn't a huge deal for most people, but who wants to buy a $1,000 uh, VR setup and get the fucking Vive ones? I know. Right? Not me. <laughs> I'd be so mad. Yeah, they're so not mad. good, dude. They're not good. Yeah, they're totally. just straight up not good. Yeah. Like, you can't do most things with them. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I agree, man. I really agree. It's It's... Oh well. So what do you Sorry Vive. Yeah. Sent so... a Vive bashing <laughs> Well the like headset's to... good. Yeah, for the record, I love my Vive Pro. I think it is yeah. so awesome. And like I've used all the headsets, I've used them all, and I guess I would take the index, but I put that thing on and it yeah. feels great and it sounds great and it looks great. And mm -hmm. I have zero issues with the Vive Pro headset yeah. itself. I love it. It is a great it works headset. great. Um, yeah. I have no complaints. Great headset. And so what does Vive do? They discontinue it. I know. They discontinue. They're like, the one headset we have that's amazing? Let's discontinue <laughs> See, now, it. now we lost Steve. Now we lost Steve. Steve's out. God damn it. <laughs> oh, man. I just, I just can't. I just don't get what their plan is. I, I don't get it. I know. It's ridiculous. And it's, it's like, so why crazy. would they not? Like, where are they? You know, like, shouldn't, like, we have an HTC Vive representative on the show and be like, okay, guys, yo, don't worry. It's okay. We're figuring it out. Here's our plan. This is why we did this. You, like, instead, they're just, like, listening to all of us and they're like, oh, <laughs> they don't care. I feel like they don't care. They don't care about their customers and that's where their problem is. Well, they unfortunately. They on their customers when they need help. Like, they, you know, they don't, they just don't care about what their customers want. They don't. They don't care about their customers. And they think all they of their best. customers are people with fucking YouTube channels. So yeah, that's, that's a really true. bad idea because yeah. everyone's sitting here being like, whoa, HTC Vive, they're fucking up. And we've said yeah. this on multiple episodes of this show already. And we're only yeah. five episodes in. Yeah. You know, so it's, yeah. Uh, it is pretty sad. Oh, well, HTC, hopefully you get your head out of your bum and um, do some stuff right sometime in the near future, right? Because yeah. we don't want to see HTC fail. We really don't. VR needs competition. We need competition to drive technology forward. It's just how the world works, right? And no yeah, one basic is, economics. Yeah, and and no one basic. is really out there to comp to compete with Oculus. I mean, Vive kind of is, but I mean, there's they're out they've outpriced themselves from the direct competition, right? So someone's going to come in. And and I hope HTC gets some new leadership and they and they turn things around and um, because we need more competition in the VR world. Yeah. So anyway, so but yeah, I guess we'll we'll kind of cruise into a little bit of Steve knows here. Yes, you know we've got this guy on our show, so we should probably uh, you know learn a little bit more about him. Yeah, uh, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. You know, so so we're. Uh, this is a question that I've asked a lot of people, and uh, eventually I'm going to make a video with like everybody's responses to this. But uh, I'm curious, what was your magic moment for VR? What was the moment that flipped the switch on? Oh, 
So I better make I better make this a good one. <laughs> <laughs> is it, it's going in a compilation. Right? No, I'm not going to put you oh, in yeah. the compilation. No, no, I'm going to put important people in it. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I said that. I'm sorry. I didn't mean it. <laughs> you'll be in my compilation, oh. Steve. Damn it, so, you're the most important person I, I know. Uh, <laughs> I think, I think, I think, it's made up. He's made up to me. <laughs> my, my, my wow moment in VR was really I'm, I, my, my favorite franchises of all time are Resident Evil and Final Fantasy luckily for me I've got Half-Life Alex coming out the week after that Resident Evil the week after that Final Fantasy wow. But that's not related. <laughs> but so in, tw in October 2016, PlayStation released their PlayStation VR headset. I, I, at that time, I'd been using the gear. I just I thought it was very gimmicky. I think many people kind of had that opinion. It wasn't like mind blowing. Right. But they released Resident Evil 7 with virtual reality support. And that's kind of the first big VR title wow. that I played. Cool. And that just blew my mind i spent so long because it was scary there was action it was gruesome it looked beautiful i think that was my probably my favorite best virtual reality moment and i'm, I'm chasing that now yeah. i'm chasing that yeah. <laughs> i hope having half-life is going to probably bring that again to the table probably but yeah Re resi 7 so. yeah dude resident evil 7 was incredible that's a really good answer that's a yeah. great answer actually because uh, that game is super super intense and if there's anything that's intense gonna, is the right if, word if there's anything gonna sell you on the immersiveness of vr that game is a is one of them yeah i didn't know if i was gonna be able to complete that game i wanted to play the whole thing straight through in vr and i did but it was a fight. I had to literally psych myself up to get back into that game. Because I was like, all right, man, Dude. you can do this. You're not going to have a heart attack. Yeah. Like, <laughs> when the fear is coming after you, is yeah, it's oh, so scary. Like, oh, when he's chasing so you through the house, oh my fuck. <laughs> what about the mom lady that like she kind of like yeah like creepy like oh, sitting God. in the corner so it's scary. like i don't like you have to walk past her and you're like oh God. she's so scary yes. yeah and spoiler alert turns out to be the uh <laughs> the, the naughty one oh, the bad one really? yeah dude oh, God. Oh, man uh, that game is just so freaky you know and they put out a lot of good dlc for it too um yeah do you play it free yeah it's free free yeah did you, did you play that one where you get to play uh shoot i can't remember some card game that they make you stick your hand in that machine that chops off your fingers so every time you what? lose no. <laughs> oh dude go back in and play some of the dlc in vr because it is really legitimately terrifying and it's it's so good those guys just great job great job and i, I can't believe it hasn't come to pc right why hasn't resident evil 7 come to pc like, no what the heck it's just... yeah yeah Especially because I feel like if it did, you could maybe get some better controls. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. But goddamn, that game is good. So yeah, good answer. Yeah, that is a good answer. <laughs> so, so why, why, uh, like, how did you start your content creation journey? You know, like, why YouTube? Oh wow! Okay. I actually start. I st <laughs> my very first. I actually, I didn't start doing virtual reality. I started off doing Nintendo Switch content. Okay. Um. Oh. They, they, they have because really? they, they, they have lots of retro styled games, lots of indie development, and and that that's kind of that's what I was really really into being a retro lover. Um, yes, that's what I started with. I started my very first video was I was on training for my my first job after I just left school or well, university, um, and I was in a hotel, <laughs> and that's where I started it. I saw, um, but the reason I started it um, was that I, I kind of felt a bit alone in the gaming, in the gaming world. I don't really have people that were heavily invested in gaming. It was more of a passion that I felt that I was just enjoying by myself. And I needed a way to to vent it and share it with people. Yeah. And so that's what that's why I started doing this. And the support and the uh the the positive feedback in the community have just been out of this world. So anyway, if you guys are watching, thank you so much. Um from the bottom of my heart, you've made this YouTube journey incredible and i can't wait to see what's to come dude you're killing it like the growth the growth that your channel has seen in a short amount of time is awesome man and mm -hmm. it's 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 yeah. it's great for you and it's great for vr right like it, it shows is. that vr is growing and mm -hmm. like um you know all the people who are doing this are are so passionate and are so invested in all of this and uh I think it's I think it's fucking awesome, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, go please go to Steve Doe's YouTube channel and check it out if you haven't already. Uh, <laughs> amazing content. Uh, he gets right 
right to the point of everything, all the stuff you want to know, none of the bullshit. You know, I wanted to know the bullshit. That's why we asked him to come mm-hmm. on the show. <laughs> <laughs> right. So. Yeah, and that, that's what I was getting at earlier. Yeah. It's like yeah. it's plenty of it. Yeah, it's like I, I want some of that in between stuff too. Yeah. For um, sure. By the way, with with the Nintendo Switch and and with retro, um, a game that I've been playing a lot lately. <laughs> it's off topic. I don't care. Uh, is Shovel Knight? Tell me you love that game. Thank you. <laughs> Love that, that game. game. Is so <laughs> fucking it's awesome. So it's so good. Game. King of yeah, Cards so is so good. Like the newest expansion, I am all about it, dude. I love that game. It's a good, yeah. It's really good, man. They took it's everything. King of Hearts. Kingdom Hearts reloaded. It's not for the Switch, but yeah, the DS. The DS nice. just, it's just down here on the floor next to me. Are just... you are you gonna play Animal Crossing? No, oh, I hope no one hates me for this, but that's just not my game. It's okay. I can't. It's all I right. won't be playing it. <laughs> uh, I, I put like 550 hours into my Animal Crossing town on 3DS, dude. Like, it is decked. I have like flowers everywhere and like custom art on the walls in my house and shit. Like, I, I went hard on Animal lost. Crossing. Yeah, so you got lost. In I it. did. I really did. Yeah. I mean, the, the fact, just the thing that I love about it is that you just have like, it's like a daily thing. It's like every day you turn on the game and like the store opens at 8 a.m. In 8 a.m., like 8 a.m. Like you have to wait for the store to open. Yeah. Yeah. And I love it. Yeah. Yep. And like the stock changes in the store every day, you know. So like I'll wake up and it'll be like 7.50, wait 10 minutes for the store to open, run around in my town, water flowers, go to the store when it opens, see what items they have, take them home, decorate my house with them, save and quit. Wake up the next morning, seven fifty. Oh, I got ten more minutes. You know, it's like it's like a daily You're like living the game. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's like a now. daily thing. Um, I can't wait till Nintendo gets into VR. I mean, you know, minus the cardboard stuff. Yeah. You know, I mean that stuff is fun to build, and me, you know, I, I had a lot of time uh, building that stuff with my five year old, and it's super fun. Uh, you know, the Nintendo Labo kit stuff. Mm-hmm. But man, when Nintendo really gets into VR. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, by man, the way, if, if if you're listening and you're an Animal Crossing fan and you love VR, which I assume you do, because you're this deep in this podcast right now um <laughs> play raccoon lagoon raccoon lagoon on oculus is like the best way to emulate that animal crossing experience you run around do quests and stuff it's cute it's good vibes and uh, you can play it with other people which is of course you know i love so uh, raccoon lagoon if you like animal crossing and you like nintendo that might be it might be up your alley you should definitely check it out so steve i have a question for you Yes, be afraid. Be very afraid. <laughs> no, just kidding. So, so I want to know about the dancing cow. So, uh, so at the yeah, end of every so Steve classic. Knows episode, there is a dancing cow. And maybe I'm going to answer this question by myself, but every time that dancing cow comes on, I smile. You know? So, so tell me, what, what made you find this dancing cow? Where did this thing come from? Give me, give me the origin story of the cow. Uh, there's, there's not really much of an origin story, but it didn't it didn't start off as a cow. It used to be uh, like a really elderly gentleman dancing at the end. Oh, really? <laughs> that's, yeah, that's how it started. It was a an old man. really elderly gentleman. <laughs> Break it down. <laughs> it was a really elderly gentleman. <laughs> so, so, um, and, and it was literally for the reason that you just stated, like, I thought it's the end of the video, the music's on. Um, I, I hope that people watch my channel and they feel a bit more hyped about virtual reality. So I wanted to just to end it on something, like you said, that just makes you smile. Yeah. And the dancing, ca- the dancing old man and then the dancing cow, I just come across it. <laughs> that's, and that's the birth of it, really. <laughs> no, <laughs> that- there's, like, there's probably like a profound psychological point to be made here. You know, like just by like putting something dumb like that at the end of the video, you yeah. probably are like, like sinking your claws into them a little harder. And you know, like, <laughs> you know what I mean? You know what I'm saying though? You're mine. Yeah, it's like, it's like you, you thought about not caring, but then you saw the cow and you became mine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like, I bet you there's like a psychological, a, a true psychological yeah. effect, especially considering that he noticed it, wanted to talk about it. Here we are yeah. laughing and joking about it and yeah. shit, making yeah. it even more legitimate. Yeah. You're on to something there. I, I'm very pleased that you brought this up, though. Yeah. It's something that every time I've done a video and I put that there, I always watch the entire cow dancing to the music track at the end. I love it. Me too, man. Me <laughs> yeah, too. It makes fan. me pretty happy. <laughs> That's what it is. People are like, oh, I hate this guy. He's so annoying. Ah, no, no. Uh, okay, never he's good. mind. There's that <laughs> dancing yeah, cow I love. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, 
What year is this? I'm gonna have to, are there stuff. any videos left on your channel with the dancing old man? I'm gonna have to go check that out. Oh, I honestly don't know the name. Yeah. It was so long ago because yeah. the cow's been there for a very long time yeah. now. Yeah. Uh, I, yeah, I don't remember. It's... It would have been one of the early uh, virtual reality videos, so like June, July last year, but I don't know which one. Yeah. I'm sorry. Everything yeah, no, is, cool. is still on the channel, all the Nintendo stuff and all that? Um, I think I've made them private now. I'm not 100% sure. Just because I know that if, if I keep having people who are into Nintendo content visiting the channel, then it's YouTube are going to start recommending me any, right. to uh, kind of the wrong crowd of people. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I think I made them private. But it, it, all, the, all, all the videos are still there for me to watch. Nice. <laughs> and they're really embarrassing. It's like I've just started doing YouTube. Here's an idea so I'm not feeling you. confident. You should make those so, links available for Patreon subscribers. Yeah, totally. <gasps> Yeah, that's a great yeah, idea. So they can, so they can hate me some more. You can, take that one. <laughs> you can have that one. That one's free. I don't think anyone's hating on you, Steve. You got a lot of subscribers. You know, <laughs> everyone loves your content, man. <laughs> I can't get my phone down. I'm like, uh, hello, um, welcome to Steve Knows. Uh, <laughs> Ten. This is. Um, <laughs> I just like. There's no confidence yeah, there the, in the, the delivery. The self-deprecation is a part of the charm. We all yeah. love that. <laughs> just keep self-deprecating and just keep watching. <laughs> yeah, no, that would be cool. That's a really good idea. Yeah, putting those those links up for because I would Patreon. actually like it is to a see great them. Idea. I would like to see them. I, yeah. You know, especially yeah. like your fans will want to see. Oh, it would be cool. The early to watch days of Steve. Stuff. Yeah, yeah, do that. Do that, right. and then maybe I'll I'll right. sign up. So it's I can a see great it. idea. Yeah. Right on. <laughs> the <new> <laughs> <laughs> I feel so embarrassed though. <laughs> that's good stuff, man. No, that's really good stuff. You know, VR just started a couple of years ago, right? Like, like three years ago, really. That's crazy. You know, yeah, and you so know it's like I, honestly, now that I'm thinking about this, my first on-camera appearance as Alex VR was talking about Nintendo. I was talking about Nintendo Lab Labo. Oh, I just got yeah. it, and I knew that because when I started, I started uh, just streaming Firewall Zero Hour on PSVR because I just fell in love with the game and I was playing it every day. And I realized Good. VR was huge, so I was like, okay, well, I should just contribute. I should just, I'm already playing. I'll just record it and broadcast it, and people can come and watch. Um, but then when I realized I really wanted to be a part of this community and a part of the VR world, I was like, okay, I need to be on camera. Like, if no one ever sees me or hears me talking or anything, like, it's it's never gonna happen. So. Um, that's when I was like, okay, I should probably do review videos and stuff like that. And the first thing that came along once I made that decision was the Labo. And I just like set up my Surface, hit record, and just like live streamed it super quick. Hey, what's up? Here's the Labo. This is what's going on with it. Blah, 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 blah. Um, so we have that in common of kind of. I mean, your shit was like all No, no, I love that. Yeah, yeah, I started there too. And again, it was just like, I was like not looking at the camera at all. You know, I'm just like, hey. Here's Nintendo Labo. Is, that seems a normal this progression. There's a few, um, Wishful had done the same. He was doing Nintendo content as well before he went to virtual reality. Oh, cool. So it seems to, yeah, got some common ground amongst yeah, us. We do. Yeah, yeah. we do. Yeah, I'll let you know there's a lot of passionate Nintendo fans out there, just like there's a lot of passionate VR players. Yeah. Well, for a lot of people, know? that's where it started. And yeah. one thing that excites me is that there are a lot of kids right now, like your daughter, yeah. who their memories of Nintendo will be of Oculus Quest. You know, like oh, we, totally, we think back at yep. like being the kids doing this, but they're going to think back to doing this. Yes. You know, dude, my daughter's five years old and she comes up to me all the time and she says, daddy, can I fly your spaceship? Right. And she <laughs> wants to go into no man's sky and she wants to get in the spaceship and she wants to go to a planet and she wants to land and she wants to go see what animals are there. And like, oh, my God. And she loves it. And she sits on my lap and I help her with some stuff. But she loves flying through space and that's something that we're always going to have together you know what i mean mm -hmm. you know we we watch a lot of spacex launches together and stuff right. like that and she will always i think remember Dude, flying daddy's spaceship do you know how much that's going to mean to her yeah. like think about like how meaningful your memories of a kid like yeah. playing games are you yeah. know like when i think about like getting mario 3 for my birthday when i was like six or something mm -hmm. like that was a huge thing you know and like all my memories are all associated you know just like star fox like if you think about star fox yeah. oh it was so fun we go back now holy shit this wasn't that great like that's that's like what these experiences these vr experiences are going to be like yeah. and it's it's going to be an even steeper difference in the technology like if you oh, compare sure. an oculus quest to an nes you're like holy shit that's 25 years of technology but yeah. imagine the quest with the 25 year successor after that it's going to oh, be dude. exponentially better 
exponentially. So it's like we I don't even think we can fathom what that will look like today. No. Nah, like, seriously, twenty five years from today, this world will not even be remotely the same. Right. You know, you look at photos of yourself as a child and like you see like the rotary phones in the background and shit. You're like, what? You know, like the old TVs, like <laughs> mm -hmm. now we have this. Yeah. Imagine that difference. 25 years in the future. Yeah, from remember now. watching like like uh, Terminate or not like um, Total Recall, and you know they'd be making video calls, and you're like, never. Yeah, when's that never. gonna happen? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Except the one thing they got wrong is it's it's on this little piece of glass that's always in your pocket. It's not on a monitor stuck to a wall. Right. You know what I mean? And you can just see anyone's face instantly. They never saw that stuff. Happening. Yeah, totally. And man. it's like it's we take be... such an analog an analog look at all of this stuff. Like we're looking at like the the lenses that we talked about earlier in the show. You know, like that still almost seems analog compared to the way that like i think black mirror hit the nail on the head have you seen black mirror steve yeah i, I a few episodes have you seen, I've seen the, have you the seen virtual their VR? reality one yeah just like the little like pod you're in yeah, and then it's good. <laughs> yeah that's it i i, I <laughs> honestly i feel like that that is yeah. a better a better guess at the way things are going to be in the future than some of the other stuff that i've seen for sure yeah i can see it going that mm -hmm. way for sure just I mean, like remove all yeah. of the friction no friction yeah no friction i mean i think the, the first thing is Neuralink. I think then they will go wireless. Obviously, no one wants to have wires put into their brain and have a port sticking out of the yeah. side of their head, right? But if you could go wireless, yeah, I think that's exactly what's going to happen. There'll be, you know, a little thing you could put on your temples maybe, mm -hmm. and it takes over your sensories. Mm -hmm. You know, um, that will be the solve for locomotion that you'll think about walking, and it'll just feel natural. Yeah. It'll feel... It'll feel good. Um, I'm really excited to see that stuff. That's the only reason I think I would ever want to be immortal is to see what happens to virtual reality in the future. <laughs> not yeah, yeah, reality. I'll, I'll be sad on my deathbed. Like, I'll, yeah. I'll be sad that I'm not going to be able to see what the next 10 years yeah. brings in tech. Yeah. But but that's like assuming that we live a normal lifespan, that's still like three of those sections from now. You know, like yeah. the, the NES to Quest, right? That's going to happen again and again and again, multiple yeah. times before that comes. And we might be at a point in the future when we're, our bodies are like getting ready to go with like, okay, and uh, we'll go ahead and transfer your consciousness to the hard drive whenever you're ready. And you'd be like, goodbye body. <laughs> and now you exist eternally yeah. somewhere else sure. in some like stick neural network or something. Stick me in Steam VR permanently. Mm -hmm. I'll just live there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. and, it, and it took us the whole show to get here but this is in essence what this podcast is all about yeah living between realities and i, I truly feel and we truly feel that vr is a part of the evolution of what it means to be human and mm -hmm. we are riding the super fun waves slashing blocks and stabbing zombies along the way yeah <laughs> it's amazing. absolutely man it's amazing absolutely well, so we're pretty much there. Yeah, huh? We're at an hour and a half. And um, uh, the only request I have left for you, Steve, is maybe when we sign out, you can give us your famous outro. Oh, <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Or maybe we can all try it. Maybe we can all do a good day. <laughs> <laughs> good day? Good day. So what's coming on, no. on your channel? You got anything planned? Any videos that we should be excited to look forward to? Uh, the, the latest one I put up was about how to set up that Oculus Quest Live because they, they've just released the oh, beta great. for mixed reality. Yes. I saw that. Does it work? So th that's the latest. But nothing coming as of yet. I've just been enjoying a Sunday off. Nice. <laughs> which right. is very rare right. working full time with all of the YouTube work and content I try to put out. It's a, it is a tough one. Right. Yeah. It so I'm, just, I'm time. enjoying some, mm -hmm. some time off, I think for the next couple of days. Yeah. Um, but there's always good stuff coming Honest. Yeah. People yeah, don't realize sure. how much time it takes to actually edit these videos yeah. and put this stuff together. I have a the, mountain of footage, dude. Yeah. It takes so much time and it's, it's very commendable to, to, you know, for you to be yeah. banging away at this stuff. It's and, really awesome. Yeah. Yeah. But before I did YouTube, as, as a spectator, um, you're just completely oblivious to it. Yeah. But now that I'm on the other side, the level of work that goes into this stuff is is nuts. So yeah, hats off to any content creators yeah. watching mm -hmm. this. Absolutely. And, and this, I think, just speaks to uh, how appreciative we are that you have taken this time to create content with us today on your Sunday day off. I know you called mm -hmm. it a day off, but there you are in front of the camera. You know what I mean? Yeah. So we definitely... This isn't work. Uh, th this is brilliant. I, I've enjoyed this a ton. So have this I. This has been brilliant. This yeah. has been us too. super, super fun, man. Mm -hmm. um, we are we really appreciate you taking the time to join us for this conversation. Um, and uh, you know, I think we'll probably have to do it again sometime in the future 
Yep. Yeah, hopefully we can meet up at something like an OC7 or the next CES. Yes. Oh, hopefully there is an OC7, right? Mm -hmm. Fingers <laughs> crossed that there's an OC7. Dude, Come on. I will literally be heartbroken. OC6 oh, yeah. was huge, bro. Like, yeah. that was everything. And yeah. Yeah. we got to go to OC7. And if, even if nothing happens uh, at this point, I feel like we've, like, made this nice bond and we can at least do some online VR gaming or something like that, mm -hmm. you know? Like, get into some co-op or, yep. you know... We'll get into a, the, some fun battle royale game whenever it drops or whatever you know lots <laughs> is going to be happening right on all right well i guess this is uh where we'll end it um there will be a brand new giveaway starting right now um mm -hmm. so definitely get into the giveaway and if you win it you yep. can pick whatever vr game you want you can pick some um, some accessories some accessories that we got in there so yep. definitely don't hesitate to do that uh yeah, yeah, yeah check the description yes please subscribe it would help us enormously yeah. if you subscribe yeah. that would be fantastic subscribe share this shit subscribe to G to steve knows Subscribe mm -hmm. to uh, everybody and like everything. <laughs> like everything. Leave a comment. But Share the love. all it takes is like a click or a comment. Like I'll I'll be cruising through videos and I'll just like leave something fast, you know, just be like, hey man, thanks for the video and like keep moving, yeah. you know. Like if you're a part of the VR community, it doesn't take much to like be an active member mm -hmm. just by commenting, saying hi, hitting a like button, or, or even a dislike button. Honestly, dislikes actually help. I don't know if you yeah. do that, but it's the mm -hmm. engagement engage yeah. with content be a part of the fucking community since you're already here so join us and um with that that's gonna be it steve knows go ahead and end this show for us brother <laughs> thanks for watching <laughs> between realities <laughs> good day good day, good day. <laughs>